and uh, and Skip, you know, you guys have done a great job. The, the volume of uh, of material we're getting, and uh, the I haven't seen them all. And uh, thanks for putting them into the YouTube. It's that's part of my late night viewing, but uh, uh, just to work to get those guys, and it, uh, all of the guys have done a great job. You know, from the college coaches. Uh, I just watch, as a matter of fact, I watched Coach Cooper's defensive uh, uh, thing on YouTube uh, this morning. And, uh, but, you know, really good job. Thanks, Coach Hathaway. And, uh, and Skip, uh, you guys, well, I'll tell you, you know, you do a great job. And uh, my two-minute sideline with Skip, Skip introduced me to Maine football. Uh, years ago, I was head coach at UMass Lowell, and I recruited Maine. Skip invited me to uh, clinic. In those days, we did it in Lewiston. And Skip, you may remember, it was a two-day. We did it like a Friday evening and then a Saturday morning. And uh, when Tim Roach uh, talks about those dudes that sweat on your head, after being at the, uh, the Elks Club uh, after the Friday session and then heading into Saturday morning with a large cup of coffee, um, uh, thank you for my introduction to Maine football. We got it done, Coach. You know me, always yeah. getting it done. We did, and you know, uh, not to, I don't want to meander because I, I I want guys are here to get some football going, but you did a great job. As I said, you, we've had great speed. I remember at that particular clinic, Donnie Brown, at that point was head coach at Plymouth, uh, defensive coordinator at, at Michigan now, uh, was one of our clinicians along with numerous guys. So, Skip, great job getting those guys. But here we go. Um, All right, man, you got it, Coach. Floor is yours. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, is I, I was talking to Coach Glenn a little bit. Um, this was our first year with uh, eight-man football at Hebron. You know, next week or whenever, I'm going to do a thing on practice organization, you know, and I'll get a chance to talk a little bit more. But certainly quite a challenge as a longtime uh, football coach, uh, most recently on the high school level and on the college level. Uh, you, you know, football is still football. The tackling is still there. The, the uh, the schemes and, you know, and all those things. But it, it did take us, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit to, uh, to figure this out. Uh, before I get going, uh, this, my staff at uh, Hebert, I, I got two great guys. Uh, most of you guys know Ed McDonough. Ed, a long time, was a very successful football coach at Wells High School. Uh, Ed, Ed runs our offense. Uh, Ed did a great job at Wells. Went in and became a very successful uh, high school administrator, uh, being a superintendent for a number of years, and came back and joined us the last two years. And Ed's did an outstanding job. Boy, I, you guys know when you put a staff together to have guys uh, with that type of experience, and uh, uh, and Ed did a lot of research online. As, uh, you know, talking to the listening to the OOB staff and there their presentation to, you know, to get up to speed on eight man. Uh, I've known Ed since the second grade. We grew up together. Uh, I, I went to the college end of it. He went into the high school end of it. And at our age, uh, uh, to be able to come back and, and the chance to coach together at the end of our tenures, uh, outstanding. And I'm, I'm fired up. I also want to mention Brad Cummings. Uh, Brad's our third assistant. We have three assistants. Brad's a long time faculty member and football coach at, at Hebron and does a great job uh, with it. So uh, shout out to those guys um, that, that do a great job. But um, we're, we're a little bit different. Uh, we're at the private prep school level. And I think of some of the things that maybe make us a little different than uh, some of the guys on high school level that played eight man last year. We have uh, 16 players on our roster. Steve Shukey from Kent's Hill, who's going to talk offensively, did a, it's done a great job too. Uh, I think they were about the same number as well as Hyde. And uh, that's certainly, and out of that 15, you know, because we've got international students, we've got uh, a wide variety uh, uh, PG that's going on to play college football to some international students that, that wouldn't know if the ball stuffed had air in it. Uh, so we have to take all those things into consideration as we, uh, as we put our plan together. And uh, it was evolving. Uh, we face a wide variety of, of offenses. And I know Coach Shukey's going to, and I've got some clips 
that I'm going to show you of, um, of uh, defending the spread offense with three wide outs or an empty set to uh, play Pomfret in the uh, New England championship game where they're a two tight end, full house, kind of a semi-wing T type of operation to where we uh, played Holderness. It was mostly spread, playing with three wide receivers, and uh, which was good. So it gave us a chance to kind of figure out how we wanted to put our scheme together. But let me roll here with my uh, slides here. Uh, and I've heard his uh, setup. And uh, basically, we're an odd defense. Uh, I've heard some guys call it a 3-2. But we, we've tweaked it a little bit uh, going forward. Our base coverage is man safety free. And, you know, in our study last summer and watching other teams, and I'm going to go over some of the other concepts that, that other people are doing, the most common one is what I call a cover zero uh, concept, where it's some type of um, three, two, or three, three, with a plain man all the way across the board. It could be like a four man line, a four, two. Uh, one of the things, the challenges we know with, um, with eight men in a wide open field, there's a lot of open space. I've always wanted to retain depth in the defense. Uh, and I know it's high score and a lot of it for those defenses. And we do play some of it. And I've got clips where we play that cover zero concept uh, with, with a six-man box and a lot of guys near the line of scrimmage. It, it's, you know, it, it's good. If you stop the run initially, great. If it pops through, uh, it's off to the races because you've got two layers to the defense in that second layer is playing man to man. So I, I've wanted to retain some of the, the different layers of the defense. So the first thing I, I've got drawn up here in, in, is our base, and I'm going to go through this versus a spread, uh, versus a tight set, just kind of take a look at it. And um, obviously we're playing man safety free. And you can see uh, our line, we're playing, uh, in our terminology, uh, two five techniques, outside shade on the guard. And we play a flex nose as a starting point. And he's a combination of a nose linebacker. And then you'll see in the clips, we've got to kind of set behind the defensive line. Uh, and then we're playing man safety free, obviously. We man up all the way across the board. Our corner's a man on the wide outs. Our outside backer, in this case versus this spread set, is man-to-man -man on the slot, and our Mike linebacker is man-to-man on the back. I think, and again, the key guy and, uh, uh, is this free safety. And what we do to get him involved, and this diagram's probably a little off a little bit, um, we would play him, if it's in a run situation, probably at seven or eight yards, in that guard box, and he's keying like a middle linebacker would, you know, the guard center box right in here for run pass. Meaning, like a middle linebacker, if we get a heavy run feel, you know, uh, a drive, a pull, you know, and all those things, he's going to flat foot. So on the snap of the football, he'll pop his feet, read that box, and if we got a run feel, He's going to fill the alley inside out, keeping the ball on his outside shoulder. Obviously, if he gets a high set, okay, he's going to drop and become our post player in the middle of the field and give us help, uh, you know, on that. So that's where we try to – we're splitting hairs. You'll see if it's a passing team, the spread teams, third and long, 10, 12, 15, whatever it is, it's a, in your, your – uh, study statistically it's a, a passing situation we're going to play him as a pass for us run uh second guy and he'll be a deep defender with it so that's kind of how we get him involved um in the run game and the pass game in first and second down the other thing again we evolved to this flex nose we're not very big up front uh, you know all our guys 
these guys on the outside, these defensive end type guys are like 170. Uh, the nose guys, probably 175. We got one guy that rotates and might be 180. So we rely on a lot of defensive line movement, slants, loops, which I'm going to show you here, to try to, try to tie up this, uh, this box here and help us get the ball to move out uh, with it. But again, this is our uh, three-man line versus spread, man safety free. And this component of the uh, free safety robber type guy. We move on into the next slide. We see this quite a bit from the spread teams. And when we look at um, uh, some of the clips of Kent's Hill, they'll start out in empty, meaning quarterback and shotgun. They'll have two tight ends and two flankers. And Coach Yuk will talk more about that. Um, and, you know, we looked at, and that's how this flex nose developed a little bit. So, you know, in this set, uh, you know, obviously you got four wideouts. Our adjustment here, obviously, our corner's a man on the wideouts. Our outside backer has a slot. Now the middle backer has to remove, and now is man-to-man -man on that back that came out of the backfield to form an empty set right here. So what we did, in, in, uh, I know in the, uh, the OOB guys, when they talked about quarterback scramble is a big issue. Uh, uh, you know, in the passing game where he just takes off. And you, you guys know if you're playing man-to-man, -man, you, you get past, you know, guys are running downfield. Eventually they got their backs turned to the football. And if that quarterback breaks loose, um, you know, it's off and running. You know, the last guy you got left is your, your post play free safety. So we do a lot of things with this flex no spy. Uh, is a big thing that we can do. You'll see we time in for some twists and loops. So anytime we get an empty set in our three-man line deal, we'll flex them. And then depending upon if it's a quarterback run threat, he may serve as a spy or a delayed rusher. Uh, you know, with it. You know, as they move back into the backfield, we can move them back up on the line of scrimmage uh, going forward. So this is our three-man line. Uh, cover one, meaning man safety free uh, versus empty. We do get a lot of tight sets. Uh, offensively, uh, we evolved in from a wing T that Ed had run at Wells into an I team just because of our personnel. We, we found a, a real good tailback. Uh, so we do run the I with the tight end and the split at times. So we do see some tight sets. Obviously, if we get a tight set, uh, we would, uh, our nose obviously would come up and play a zero. Uh, you can do a couple things with your defensive ends. One of the things we do as a starting point, we leave them in the B gap, okay, and we really penetrate them uh, with it. Obviously, now with two backs in the backfield, our outside backer now comes inside with our Mike linebacker, the former two linebacker look and they're matching the path of the I set. Our corners move up. When we play them in a two-by-two, two, two yards outside, uh, two yards back, and they're keying through that tight end, and they're run support guys, meaning if that tight end were to block down aggressively and we got flow, you know, they're going to fill, leveraging the ball on their inside shoulder, forcing it back uh, with it. We've also seen teams in our league that'll take these defensive ends and move them on the outside of the tight end, playing a five technique, okay, giving you a bigger B-gap bubble in here. And that's fine, too. You know, if you, you got teams that may be a little bit better with their outside run game, putting the ends out in a, a five and playing with a B-gap bubble, is a nice answer to that. But this is how we do it here as a starting point. Obviously, in this scenario, again, this free safety is in his robber technique. He's about, again, uh, behind the linebackers in that six or, yard, six or seven yard level, keying through that guard, set up guard box uh, uh, to determine heavy run or pass field, and then fill an inside out on it. Uh, so that's our cover one 
uh, versus a tight end. Obviously, if you know they shift, our corner would shift out. Same thing if we get running back, shift out motion. You know, back goes this way, the, the backer would run with them. Goes this way, the mic would run with them. It would become a one linebacker look. Uh, that's our cover one uh, versus a tight set. Okay. Uh, as I said, we're, we're not a big uh, upfront tight up team, O-line or D-line. And so we rely on a lot of line movements, some typical or classical Oki 50 type moves. Um, and a lot of them, what you'd see, we do from the flex nose. What we'll do in this scenario, uh, our pinch, we're now, we take our, our two five techniques and we'll flex the nose off a little bit. They'll pinch into the A gaps. Uh, and then we'll take our nose. It will either predetermine or we'll have them key flow to loop over the top of it. Obviously, we, we, we replace, we have linebackers that are part of this run fit operation. If it's a one linebacker looking to spread, uh, Mike is going to fill the uh, the remaining gap depending upon flow. And this is a good one. Obviously, it's going to make teams that are you know inside zone, dive trap oriented. You know we're going to make the ball go outside, and uh, you know I know linebacker going to scrape over the top of it. Uh, we'll slant the line. And again, I've got clips of these that we're going to look at uh, here. Obviously, uh, we're going to. Uh, send the end up, we'll widen them, send them up into the B gap, slant the nose into A, slant this end into A. Obviously, if we get flow this way, uh, Mike's going to scrape. Flow the other way, he's going to be slow, and we may have an, uh, an overhang play here, depending upon the, uh, the formation. Uh, out, you know, if uh, we got a team that's very outside run conscious, we'll widen our ends. Uh, run them up field to box. We'll slant our nose into uh, a strong side A gap, depending on formation or tendency. And uh, this is a nice good one to turn the ball back inside. Okay, uh, so th that's, our, um, uh, that's our starting point. It's really our first and second down defense where obviously we're uh, playing against the run and play action. Uh, we also have the ability to, uh, to bring pressure. We made it real easy. Again, we, we don't have a long preseason period at the private school level. Uh, so we wanted to make uh, our blitz uh, package as, as simple as possible. And what we do is we just call it uh, free safety replace. So in this case, uh, we're going to bring our outside backer, Sam, off the edge, okay? Normally, when we're in our cover one, uh, in, in our three-man, we call it eagle, okay, whatever you want to call it, uh, that doesn't matter. Typically, uh, our outside back is man on number two, our free safety is back playing the post or as a robber technique. All we do now is we call it, you know, eagle Sam, Outside back, we, he knows he's blitzing. The free safety knows he's going to replace him in, uh, in his man coverage responsibility, which you see in this case. And I've got it drawn against the spread set. So the free safety replaces his coverage. We bring the, um, the outside backer off the edge as a contained uh, uh, edge blitz. So we slant the end into A. We bring the slant the nose to B. Uh, our mic is now man-to-man -man on the back in the backfield. Same thing. Uh, corners, I've got the uh, outside receivers man-to-man -man, uh, with it. Our rule is this. If we get any motion to shift, ownership principle. So in this case, if the slot would a motion across, our free safety would run across. If this back would a motion to shift out to empty, the mic would go with them. Uh, so whoever you align on initially, you would own them. Uh, and any shifts of motions uh, with it. But a real nice, easy way to, to bring pressure uh, without and adjusting simply to motions and shifts. 
Uh, this is a big one for us. Uh, this is Eagle Mike, zero blitz. Again, I got it drawn up against spread. Corners a man on the widest. Uh, our outside back a man on the slot. Tip uh, cover one rules on Mike would be man to man on the uh, on the back. In this case, we've got him blitzing a gap because he's blitzing. The free safety now replaces him, and now becomes the uh, man to man defender on the back, which was the initial Mike's assignment. Now we bring the Mike through a you know classical nose back a twist nose into a. We run the uh, ends up field. Uh, good run stopper. Uh, good versus pass uh, for those teams. Uh, you know, again, if they're free releasing or if they're in an empty set, uh, you know, we're bringing four and they're blocking with three. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, one of the things we do uh, is, you know, uh, as the great Tubby Raymond said uh, years ago, no one defense covers it all. And so, you know, we all have situational defenses. Uh, it, what I've gone over is basically our normal package, our first and 10, our second down, third and medium, downs that typically teams are going to be run oriented, play action, uh, maybe the quick game or whatever. Um, as we get into those extra long passing situations, whatever that cutoff may be, third and long or, or, or whatever. And one thing about playing man to man and, and playing man safety free, you know, I played a lot of it at the end of my college tenure, is like anything else, there's great advantages of playing uh, man safety free. But offense is smart, uh, and you'll see some of the clips I have, uh, guys will start to run some. Uh, cover one man beaters, uh, pick routes, mesh routes, crisscrossing, um, take advantage of personnel. They may have a receiver uh, that may match up better than whoever uh, you have covering. So we, we do play some uh, um, zone. We play uh, cover three in, in those situations uh, with an obviously I've got an empty set, which typically we could see in a third and long or extra long situation. Uh, typical 3D zone techniques are uh, corners uh, are playing uh, deep thirds of the uh, eight man football field. And we take our free safety and obviously he's gonna play the middle third. They're playing deep, classical, uh, as deep as the deepest on their divider, keeping everything in front of them. They won't react till the hand comes off the football. We don't want the ball to get thrown over our head. Uh, what we do in this scenario, uh, underneath, obviously it's going to be a two-man rush. And uh, one of the things we do uh, when we do this two-man rush, and I don't have uh, I don't have it drawn up in the slides here. We twist. You know, we'll run them upfield. Okay, we'll actually send one into send them one into A, send the other into A. It becomes like a natural X technique, kind of disrupting the uh, the pocket, making the quarterback move. But they come out of this twist, and they end up in contained type positions. Um, so just another way just to get the quarterback off the spot. So he's just not sitting there all day uh, with it. So let me get back to the underneath coverage. Our outside backer. In this case, uh, our uh, outside backer will align on the second receiver to his side. Uh, Mike's rule in cover three, he's going to align on the second receiver on his side. In this case, he's in the slot. If he's in the backfield, he'll move back into the box. And what they do, obviously, they run first, pass second guys. Ball snap, they're going to bounce and read. Once they get a pass read, they're going to turn and wall and carry two. Uh, in a zone technique. So they'll wall, head on the swivel, key in the quarterback, and then they're going to settle in their zone. Uh, you know, uh, hook, curl type zone type deal uh, with it. If they uh, were to release outside, we're going we're gonna to wall and carry, and we're going to react late. 
to that defender into the flat. And again, when you're talking third and eight or 12 or extra long 14 or 15 yards, we feel with the ball thrown in the air, we're going to rally down, minimize tackling for that whatever, six, seven yard loss, create a fourth down in, in punting situation uh, with it. Very similar to curl flat zone technique taught for the outside backer or the strong safety in, uh, in the three deep uh, technique in 11 man football. Uh, our nose is, uh, is going to be our middle hook player. Okay, we'll flex and we'll deepen them up a little bit. Uh, same thing, uh, like a middle linebacker would. Uh, he gets a pass read, he's going to angle drop, and we're going to set up in zones. So now some of those cover one man-to-man -man beaters, the uh, crossing routes, uh, the picks and all those type of things, we're going to pass those off into zones, uh, uh, rally to the uh, thrown football, tackle, minimize the uh, run after catch, and get them to punt. Uh, and said One of the things we tweaked again is uh, – moving these guys, uh, these uh, two pass rushes, you know, whether it's straight up feel, straight up and then up and under, twist, something just to get the quarterback off the spot. Uh, the other thing, again, if the quarterback is a great scrambler, the advantage of playing zone, and you see it quite a bit on the college level with these quarterbacks that can really take off and run. When you're man-to-man, -man, you saw Mahomes in the Super Bowl. These guys that play man-to-man, -man, all of a sudden, it's third and 15. He picks up and takes off because the defense, uh, defenders got their backs to the football. Uh, this uh, playing zone helps you with the quarterback scramble because you get guys that, can, that are looking at him in their zones and come off and rally down so that thing doesn't peel off into you know, a 30-yard gain uh, with it. So, uh, again, defense based on situations, normal um, line moves to disrupt the run game, uh, some uh, run pass blitzes, which you saw. And then uh, this is really our nickel third and long defense. Our last package that we use in short yardage and goal line situations, I call this a 40 cover zero. Obviously, we're now taking our free safety out of the uh, out of the robber technique and moving them up as a linebacker. Uh, I call this a 40, I guess it's similar to a 4-4 four, four look. The other thing you can do is, uh, is you can play it as a 3-3 three, three stack if you want to stay in your odd look. So you can take, you got six guys here, a four-man line, two linebackers, and we got them in a, I call it a 40 look or 60 look, whatever you want to call it. Or you can stay in your odd look and played as a 3-3 three, three stack, again, with your, uh, with your uh, corners man-to-man -man here. And uh, I'm going to show some clips of this. Uh, and this is a front, whether it's a 3-3 three, three or the 4-2-4-4 uh, four, four, four look, we see a lot of teams play as a base defense, you know, that zero look, which we did, you'll see, when in our championship game against Pomfret. Uh, we played, you know, a fair amount of this in, in run situations. So uh, this is what I got here. Uh, I don't know, uh, Coach Half, before I go to the clips, uh, if there are any questions or anything we want to take at this point. I got nothing so far, Coach. If guys want to throw something up in the chat, they can. But otherwise, you, you can keep rolling. And if they have some questions at the end, we can. Good. We, we can do that, too. Now, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to get up on. I've got my huddle here. Um, so I'm going to X out of this these slides here. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Okay, now I'm going to... should just be able to click the share screen again and, and then click on your huddle tab. Yeah. Let me... Uh... Jesus. You know, the great thing about being a college coach is you got all these young guys. As a matter of fact, I've got to um, jump in here and uh, thank Kyle McAllister. Kyle's uh, uh, assistant coach over at, uh, at Bowdoin. Kyle helped me put those slides together. Um, you know, on the college level, you get to rely on um, 
uh, young guys to do uh, all that stuff for you. Uh, with, now I've got to do it all, um, but I'm fired up here. But let me, um, I, I've got three sets of cut-ups that I'm gonna, uh, that I'm gonna show uh, against Kent's Hill. We played twice, we, we played him in our Northern Division Championship game and, and uh, Coach Shook is gonna do an offensive presentation. He does a great job uh, with it. I'm gonna show you clips of that. Uh, clips of our Holderness game. They run the spread offense. So you can see what we do against the spread. And the last uh, set against Pomfret in uh, the eight man New England prep championship game. They're a uh, two tight end. I call them kind of like a wing T offense. And you'll see come with some of the defensive concepts. But we actually play a fair amount of cover zero, you know, against those guys. But let's see if I can fire up. This yeah, while you're doing that, Coach, Coach Gallant did uh, did chime in. I, I think that last set of clips that you're going to show may, may address it. But uh, he said that they were having a big problem uh, at, at times with the power run type of offense. And how do yeah. you adjust to that out of your base and, and how do you change the problem? Yeah, let's take, let's take a look at some of these and we can go back. And that's, that's the biggest thing, especially us where, you know, we got lightweights, you know, we got 175 pound kids playing, you know, nose tackle and, uh, and stopping the power run game can be a challenge, um, um, you know, with it. And at the same point, you know, when you commit all those guys to the run, and I'm going to show you, I got, I, I got a clip against him. Pomfret beat us and they, they, they beat us in the, uh, the passing game. And we didn't do a good job myself as a, as a defensive coordinator uh, getting our eyes, it's so critical that those guys that are playing man-to-man -man and cover zero without safety help to keep their eyes on their keys, especially in those tight power sets. And we got beat on that. Uh, but um, no question, that's a um... – all right, let's roll here. Fire it up. I'm fired up to be watching tape here. Okay. Uh, before I get going, uh, and I, it's been great listening to the high school guys talk about, um, you know, uh, building their programs, listen to Tim Roach at Wells talk about culture and, and half talking about your uh, youth programs. These three guys right here on the sideline, that's, that's uh, Hebron Academy uh, youth program uh, right there. Uh, they come to our practices. Two of them are, uh, are sons of our director of admissions, and the other guy um, is um, one of our faculty. They come down. They practice with us. You know, we put them through drill work. They help me uh, with my work during when I do offensive line drills. So we're developing our young guys at uh, at Eden. So let me get rid of those guys. So we suit them up. They come to our games. They're ready to roll. Okay, um, we got here, okay, and let me go up to the next clip here. Okay, uh, and again, this is an empty set. And one of the things, and Coach Shute's gonna talk about it when he, uh, when he talks about his offense here. And here's an example, here's our three main line, our regal, Okay, we're playing cover one, and I apologize. I wish I had a college shot, an end zone, and a wide shot to see uh, deep play. But we're playing eagle cover one, and this is slant, okay? And we're slanting to the left. You know, obviously, we're taking our, um, our, our um, out to uh, B, our nose to A. We're taking this guy and bringing him into the A. Obviously, we're going to take the remaining gap with whatever we got left, depending upon the uh, formation. Pretty good. Okay. Again, just an example. We're in cover one here. Um, you know, we're running with the motion. They're in an unbalanced set here. You can say we got a lot of crossing routes. Okay, uh, just to give you a little bit of idea of the set we got going here, it's an empty set, okay? They've got two wideouts over here. 
So we've gone, it's cover one, man safety free. Typically, uh, they would line up with two tight ends, two flankers, and an empty set. But they brought the, uh, the weak flanker over. So we've gone corners over to match uh, the set here. And now they've got two tight ends. It's a nice set. And again, I'll let Coach Hugh talk about his offense. They'll typically back off one of the tight ends into the backfield to become a running back. Uh, so in this case, obviously, we've got a safety back in this area here. Uh, and our outside backer, his, uh, our uh, Mike is man-to-man on that tight end. Our uh, outside back is man-to-man on this tight end. And what we've done is we flex the nose back as a middle linebacker. And so that's what we have as a starting point here. Let me just see what we got. I think we will have a line move here. And really what should happen here, this is our French-Canadian hockey guy right here, and he's our starting tailback. When, when uh, the tight end moves back into the backfield, he should now move back as an inside linebacker. And our guy Will stays on the defensive line as he stays as an outside guy. Okay, we're just playing base here. Okay, so our uh, two defensive ends are going to play in the B gap. We've got a flex Mike linebacker. Then obviously uh, our linebackers are playing outside shade. I guess you'd call this guy, this is our guy Austin right here, playing the nine technique on this tight end. Good job by the uh, by the ends keeping their outside control, and obviously our outside backer falls in. Does a nice job. So same thing back here, and again at corners over to match the two wideouts. We've got a free safety back in here, uh, but again, there's a lot of different things you can do with him. Um, for whatever reason, we got him a little deeper. You certainly could bring him up into this robber position to key that center guard box and get him a little bit more involved in the run. Obviously, you can bring him right up that zero concept and make him a linebacker. One of the things, and listening to some of the guys talk, obviously, in eight man football, there's a lot of space. Pursue, uh, pursuit angles and leveraging the ball to minimize these long runs. Outside in defenders keeping the ball on their inside shoulder. Inside out defenders keep uh, on their outside shoulder, vicing the ball and guys running to the ball. Okay, here's an example of, uh, of the out call. Again, let's get back to the set. Same set, we got uh, uh, two tight ends, two wide outs, so we go corner over in our man safety free. Uh, Mike back a man on the tight end, playing outside leverage. Outside back a man on the tight end, flex. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take our uh, two defensive ends and slant them out. And we're going to bring our, our, uh, our nose into one of the A gaps. And just another different change up. And I think those are things you, if you're not, Maybe uh, talking to Coach Galant, if you're not stout enough, you, you got to figure a way, um, you know, to, to compensate, especially with your line play. And I, I, I like the zero man concept where you load up the box. Um, it's like anything else. Uh, it gives you numbers, but like anything else, it, it weakens you in some other areas. Uh, I do like the idea of line movements. Uh, 
to try to take away the point of attack in the run game. Um, you know, again, we, we've all done it in, in different defenses, you know, whether it's been a 50 slant. Uh, years ago, I ran a uh, stunt 4-3 defense. It was popular uh, in, the, uh, in the 80s and 90s where you slanted and loop. And you're going to see some examples of that. Just some things to uh, take away the point of attack. Use your quickness off the ball, your defensive linemen uh, to take gaps, but still be gap sound. Let me see what I got up here. So same thing. This is an in where um, we're, um, we're taking the, uh, the, uh, the two defensive ends. We're bringing them into the A. Okay, and then our flex nose is going to play off of it. You can see this just gives us another layer of the defense. I think we got sprint out here. Um, you know, same deal, Kent's Hill, unbalanced where corners over for the two wide outs. The outside backer has a tight end man to man. Um, let me get rid of this stuff here. Let's take a look at the play. Oh, yeah, here's our outside backer back. The other guy, yeah. Okay, man to man on the outside. Uh, we've got a post player back in here. This is third and long. Okay, you can see the side here with third and eight. We're expecting pass. So we got a safety a little bit deeper back in here. This is our outside, our French Canadian guy that needs to be up here a little bit closer. Okay, you see, we got spread out here. Nice thing, again, we're bringing, we're pinching the ends into the A-gaps. Obviously, it's imperative now to get our flex nose over the top in addition to our flex nose because they block the tight end on our outside back or replaces along with the flex nose to help us uh, defend the, uh, the sprint out. Nice job. Connor DeCosta uh, here, um, Coach Half, undercutting the uh, outcut. Same thing when I, you know, next week or whenever I'm scheduled to talk about practice uh, organization, one of the things we're going to talk about, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, man to man coverage technique every day. That, that, that's kind of how we start off our defensive period is one-on-one -on -one because that's all we do. We play off man. Uh, I've taught press man on the college level. Uh, and eventually we'll, we'll get to that. But we spend a lot of time on technique, keeping your eyes where they should be to play effective man-to-man -man defense. But again, example, we're pinching in to take away the A-gaps, flex nose over the top, outside backer uh, uh, replacing because this man is – uh, in the pass protection. Okay, uh, same thing. We're in our eagle. This is an out. We're bringing the, uh, the uh, ends out. And we're bringing the nose into one of the A gaps. Obviously, again, we're playing uh, cover one in behind it. Again, so it's a nice set, a nice concept by uh, uh, Coach Shuki. In a sense, it starts out in empty. Two tight ends, two flankers, an empty quarterback. And what they're going to do is bring the tight end back into the backfield. Uh, is a running back. Two flankers, obviously our corners, a man-to-man -man on the flankers. Our uh, inside backer has this tight end man-to-man -man. as he goes into the backfield. He should drop back as a, into the inside linebacker position. Our other outside backers in an outside leverage nine technique man-to-man -man, uh, on that tight end. Let's get a look at it. Again, ends going out. We're bringing the nose, our 165-pound nose. 
into one of the A gaps. He gets drilled by the center a little bit. The other thing you're going to notice, um, and we were fortunate, and Coach McDonough made the observation in our preseason. We, we inherited, we have a lot of international students. We have four guys from Mexico. I don't know who coached those guys, what youth programs. Those four guys can tackle. And um, you already saw some of Conor DeCosta, Austin. We had some guys that naturally did it. And one of the observations as you watch is they're outstanding open field tacklers. One of the skills we all know is open field tackling uh, is as tough as anything to do in the game of football. Uh, these guys, uh, we inherited guys that had that skill, but you'll see in uh, all of our tackles, uh, are low tackles where we're putting the shoulder on the thigh board and taking guys down, similar to the rugby uh, stuff, the Pete Carroll hawk tackling. We tweak and we teach it, you know, in our own traditional way. We don't have a lot of profile tackling. Tackling where, um, not tackling high, but, you know, chest tackling where we're chest to chest, wrapping, taking guys back to the ground with it, just because we got a lot of small guys. And uh, when I talk about practice, I'm going to talk about some of the drill work we do, because we tackle live every day, uh, open field, uh, in, in a safe manner. We'll go through that progression. One of the big things for us, I think the, the really key to our defense is our open field tackle. Key to any defense is tackle. All right, let me see what we got here. Same thing. You already saw this. This is the out. Uh, ends going out. Our, our uh, flex guy's giving us away, obviously. He's going to take uh, one of the A gaps, or we may run him straight through the center and, uh, and two gap him. Same thing, they're trying to run the zone play here a little bit. We got nice overlap. Again, we don't have the shot that we do have on the college level. And you can see number 30, our free safety is coming into the picture here. Again, this is the, the key guy from a robber. Whether you bring him up into the box as a cover zero linebacker type guy. Okay, we got a blitz here. Okay, is our uh, zero blitz. And what we're doing is we're going to take our mic, and, uh, and it's a uh, classical uh, uh, mic, uh, inside back of nose, nose going one way, mic going the other way. Uh, obviously, we're bringing our ends, we're penetrating upfield through the B gaps. I don't have a big enough picture here. Uh, but our free safety, whoever the Mike Backer had uh, in the man-to-man -man coverage, our free safety now enters and replaces him in, into coverage here. I'm trying to look at a set. Looks like Coach you got an unbalanced set here. And he walks it up and shows it. That's fine. You can see the nose going to the A gap left. A gap left, Mike A gap right, outside back of man to man on the tight end. And again, uh, this tight end, they drop back in the backfield. That's the responsibility of our free safety. We change it up. He said, I'm an old school guy. I like to maintain layers of the defense. Coach McDonough, really happy here uh, that we're back on offense and uh, we're rolling. This is later on in the game. Same thing, we've got a slant. 
going this way. Okay, we're bringing uh, him into A, him into B. Now we're bringing the flex nose over the top. Nice job, uh, the uh, nine technique, our outside back is setting the edge. Maintaining outside control on that tight end. And this is an example, just adding a layer to the defense by flexing off that nose. You can see the nose right here. Being a factor. Same thing, we're, 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 we're in a passing situation. We're bringing um, the, uh, the ends into A. Our nose is uh, functioning as a spy, short dropper. You can see him rush late. We know, and we all know, if you, you're bringing those guys into the A gaps, what we're trying to do is just bring vertical push up to get the quarterback off the spot. Then obviously he's going to scramble out. Then you've got your spy. Let's see what I got here. Again, three man slant, eagle slant left. This could be a game plan. Um, Situation, you know, you want to slant to the back, strength of formation, typical slant angle stuff we've all done over the years. You can see, obviously, uh, uh, we're all slanting to the left here. Again, if we had run flow going back, then our linebacker would scrape and kind of the old scrape and Okay, I'm going to shift gears. I'm going to put on a spread cut up right now. Go to these guys really do a good job at holding this. You're going to see a different. A little bit better view here um, on our set here. Okay, uh, and again, eagle cover one, we're man to man, our corner's got the wide out, our outside backer has a slot for number two receiver, our corner's got uh, the wide out on his side, uh, we've got a Mike linebacker. And again, this was a pass team with obviously some run tendencies. So going in our starting point, uh, obviously we're an eagle, our nose is up, and we're playing our end standing up more on the outside shoulder to get upfield, to get some pass, uh, vertical pass rush presence, turning the run inside. Uh, we didn't want to get beat, uh, we wanted to take the pass away while playing some coverage, obviously. We wanted to box the run inside and, and, and with the idea, hey, if you want to run inside, go to it. Uh, and that, that isn't what they uh, did on a regular basis. So that kind of was our game plan coming in. 
get a nice tackle. Okay. Uh, same thing, and I'm going to spend more time on tackling technique. Again, this guy's about 140 pounds. It's a big running. We see, because it's prep school football, we see a wide variety. We see guys that have PGs that should be in college as a freshman. And we see younger guys that should be playing JV football at other programs. This is a nice set that uh, and we, we did this, and this is a, Holdens does a nice job from the spread. They're unbalanced here. Not, not, it's a, a line that's on the other side, meaning uh, this is their center. God, God. So it's still a three man line. They just do, and they do some neat stuff out of this. Uh, but uh, it doesn't affect us. You know, we're still playing this as a, a three man line, and uh, they, they actually run a nice counter play out of this stuff, uh, they, they, they do a good job. Spread set again, three wide outs and eight man football, one back in the backfield. Uh, in this case, three wide outs, corner man on one, corner man on the widest, our outside backup man to man on the slot, our middle linebacker man to man on the back. Good job, the left end, maintaining uh, outside leverage. And again, this is a little bit better shot. I don't have many wide shots. You get a better idea. We're playing pass. You can see the D&D &D with third and 12. Obviously, in this scenario, uh, cover one safety. We've got him back, you can see. And I'm a big depth guy. Uh, with it. So he's playing the middle of the field, the post. Obviously, we're man to man all the way across the board with a three man rush. Same thing. Now we've gone, we flexed the nose. So we've got them off the line of scrimmage, uh, usually coordinating with some type of move, whether it's an out with him taking it or, or whatever. We'll see what we got. Man to man, uh, we got slot motion. Obviously, we're going to run across with it. One of the other things you could do, and I did it years ago, and something I, I want to look at to get better run support. One of the things you can do if you're playing uh, man safety free when you get this type of motion is just banjo or exchange. So when you get this long motion across, you can take the free and bring him up to take a man to man, and then take your strong safety outside back and move him back to the middle of the field instead of running across, which is fine because you can play a man to man. It's just tough to support it. Run outside in where you can sky that safety up. Just another way of uh, doing it. We started doing that later on in the year. And just an example of uh, adjusting to it. Our, uh, our end jumps inside. So we lose outside leverage. You know, we're fortunate that we got replacement like to see that flex nose uh, do a better job. You know, I need to coach him up more. Same thing with spread. Spread meaning three wide outs back in the backfield. We've got motion. Obviously, we're going to run across with motion. And uh, We're bringing a blitz here. Yeah, yeah, I, that's why I'm, I didn't fall asleep here. Um, I'm just trying to look at uh, what I had uh, up here. So again, 
we're, we're going, uh, this is our Eagle Mike Zero Blitz off the edge. So typically, what normally 14 on free safety would be back as a post player. We're taking our Mike and we're just bringing him off the edge along with our three guys in here, whatever slant movement we got. So now our free safety has come down to take um, the slot man-to-man. -man. Our uh, other outside back is taking the back man-to-man. -man. So we're going to cover zero. We're going to bring four guys. There we go. Nice job. So we're not a big blitz team. Obviously, we're bringing the end into A. There's a nice job coming off the edge. This guy right here, this is a, um, one of our Mexican students. He's got to be 110 pounds soaking wet. So he's my nickel guy, uh, although he's in now. I, I started putting him in a rotation. Uh, again, first guy did tackling drills. I'm just amazed at the toughness. You know, you look at some of these guys. Um, say they were in uh, Eagle Flex. I'm just going to take a look at it, see what I got going here. And all we're doing was with spine. This is late in the game. They're probably in some type of hurry up. Uh, so what we've done, we just spied and we flexed them. You know, you can do whatever you want with these guys, pinch them or let them run or whatever, and let him clean up. Obviously we're in man, to, uh, man safety free. Just a nice example, you know, we get quarterback scramble. And uh, nice job by the flex guy. And another layer to the defense, especially when you're playing man-to-man -man in behind it. Bringing some heat again. Same one that you saw earlier, obviously. Uh, All we're doing is uh, Mike Zero. We're bringing the mic off the edge. Free safety replace. And... Um, Take a look at it. No, we're in slot corners of man to man on number one. This is our free safety. He's man to man on the slot. And for what we did, um, the way it evolved, our mic was our best blitzer. So typically, this is our outside backer here. He would be, this would be a sand blitz, but because uh, Mike was the best blitz, and we just let him blitz off the edge. Put the Mike back, or outside back of back. He's got the back man to man, and then obviously his is a free safety. And just take advantage of what your kids do well. We're not a big, you know, hey, that's the Mike up here. He might blitz, you know. He comes off the edge. Again, good open field tackle. Just again, we're off man. They go quick game. They see the blitz on. Nice job. They know we're blitzing. Nice job by the corner playing off technique against the uh, hitch. A really nice open field tackle. All right, my last clip, and I'm going to show you it against um, a power set. And I'm, I'm going to finish off with this. This is our um, – it's, it's an amazing story. Um, you know, we showed up, Coach McDonough and Coach Cummings and myself, with these 15 guys and half of them international students. There's uh, – you can count them up right here. So we got eight guys right here out on the field. We're playing defense. Eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, so that's 15 guys that we're playing with. There's probably two guys that can come in and play. Those other guys either haven't played football or whatever. Um, um, so, you know, that, that's what we're dealing with. So we, we start out, and like anything else, when you're trying to fit this thing all, put this puzzle together, and trying to find out what guys can play, the challenge of schemes of eight-man football, uh, both offensively, defensively, and kicking game, uh, with all those things, and then putting the puzzle together, it, it's amazing. And uh, we really we, we had a good group to begin with, and I think each week we tweaked it. Uh, long story short, we're playing here. We'd beaten Kent's Hill the week before to win the North Division. And now we're playing Pomfret uh, in the New England eight-man championship game. Uh, with it. Look at this sideline here. Uh, 35 guys uh, on this sideline. It's fine. But those things don't bother us as we tell our guys. We're all, hey, it's eight on eight. That's all we're concerned about. Put the ball down and let's play. Um, and let's play some football. I, I put this clip together because this is uh, us playing cover zero, uh, kind of a 4-2 look with a lot of line moves. And so when we um, – let me bring them out on the ball. Let's give you a look at the set here in terms of our game planning. And Coach Glenn, a little bit about the power run game. These guys certainly can power it um, and, and throw the ball off the play action, which really hurt us. You know, we knew we had to fill the box, and you can see we brought our safety in. And, uh, and I didn't do a good job of teaching, keeping our eyes on the guys who were playing man-to-man. Because, -man. you know, you're teaching guys, if you're man-to-man, -man, your eyes get in the backfield with play action uh, in a good power run play action type concept, you're susceptible. We were. And we let up a couple of long plays that hurt us and ultimately led to our uh, demise in this game. But um, so that was the game plan. So we're a four-man line. We're doing a lot of slanting, looping, and, uh, and things to stop the run game, which I think we had some decent success. But again, the play action pass killed us just because, uh, you know, I don't think I coach that thing up uh, well. So here's the first play of the game. They're in a, a, a semi, I know it's a little wider shot here. They're in a, a semi-empty set. So we got a quarterback here, two tight ends, and the two backs are over here. So obviously we're cover zero. Our corner's man on the outside guy. Our uh, safety's man on the second guy. And our linebacker man on the tight end here with it. But more importantly, uh, what I want to get across in this clip is we're taking the uh, – uh, we're taking the line, and we're, this is a pinch. So we're taking the end, bringing them into the A. We're bringing the uh, uh, tackle. Uh, I'm sorry, I ran into the B. I tackle into the A. Our other tackle into the A, and I ran to the B. So it's a classical pinch, you know, trying to take the interior gaps. Trying to take the interior gaps out. So let's take a look at it. We get nice movement here. They don't block the end. And this is the first play of the game. So, again, uh, we're, we're in decent coverage here in pure man. So, we've manned up. and looks like we got everybody covered up, at least at this stage here. Nice job creating a turnover and getting us going. So here's the set, and again, it's not a tight shot to get a look at. Obviously, we're at a quarterback. We got two tight ends, a wing. So we've got some wing T concepts to it, although they do some unique things and do a great job. And they got a back in the backfield, a quarterback, certainly a run threat. Uh, one of the things, 
and it's maybe an eight man concept type deal, we typically punt from fourth down, you know, unless it's a short yardage. Uh, Pomfret never punted in any situation. So all fourth down, maybe down here, the coming out area, they may have punted, but uh, in the middle of the field and obviously down the other end, they never punted, you know, I'm breaking the kitten game down. And, um, and I called Ed, Coach McDonough, Monday night. I said, she said, you know, he breaks down their defense. I do their offense. We break it all down together in the kick game. I said, Ed, have you seen him punt? We had a couple games on. They never punted, which is interesting. Uh, maybe some of those Sabre metrics or whatever these guys are doing now. Um, so, obviously, it was successful for them. But here we go. Same thing. What we're doing is we're, we're uh, pinching on one side, on the, to the wing side. So we're bringing the end into B. We're bringing the tackle into A. I think these guys are playing their base techniques. Let's get a look at it. So we wreak some havoc with the left end and left tackle. And some nice penetration from this side. Our right end jumps inside a little bit. But we get a nice backside. Obviously, coverage wise, we're in cover zero. Our corners man on the wing. Our safeties man on the tight end. Our middle backer is tracking the, the, the running back. He's got a man to man. And obviously, uh, right corner's got this tight end man-to-man -to, -man to match up with those eligible guys. Hey, Coach, are, nice. are you guys on an 80-yard field or a 100-yard field? 80-yard field. 80-yard uh, field. Yeah, you know, when you looked at that um, spread game against uh, um, Holderness, we had to cone it off. And uh, they painted uh, – we had to cone off the end zone, but they painted lines – the new out of bounds lines it took me a while to figure that out. Uh, with it, but in our league, it's uh, it, it's eighty yards, and obviously the uh, sidelines are brought in per uh, all eight man football. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, and I know uh, the OOB staff mentioned, uh, we don't get anybody kicking extra points. Holden has tried to kick one uh, against us, so we had to. <laughs> because the goalposts were on the 11-man field. We had to move everything up for them to attempt a, uh, an extra point. The, the problem with kicking, uh, placement kicking, extra points of field goals, with only um, eight men, you don't have enough guys across to block those outside-in blockers, I guess, geometrically or something like that. But long story short, um, um, we're 80-odd fields. I know some of the main schools have – Playing on hundred yard fields, so here I we like go. I like going for two, and I don't like punting anyway, so I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we. Uh, I'm a big. I'm an old school guy. Uh, I, I got to share this one. So, in that Kent's Hill game you saw earlier, that was our championship game for the North Division, and you saw that field, classical Maine. Uh, it's got to be 20 degrees. There's a howling wind. We're playing on a muddy field. And um, uh, we're coming out. They, they pinned us inside the 10. We're coming out. And it's third and about seven. And our quarterback, Jack Kelly, great kid, uh, kid from uh, Mass, comes over to Coach McDonough and says, hey, uh, Coach, he goes, uh, he goes, I think we should quick kick this. We never practice a quick kick. So Ed looks at me. I look at him and said, hey, go with it. So we're in shotgun. It's like third and eight, I don't know, from the minus 15. He takes it and booms that thing, end over end, you know, on the other side of the field uh, with it. And it probably, obviously, changed the field position. And, uh, you know, great, uh, great coaching uh, on our end of it. And, uh, but, you know, obviously the kicking game. And I do. I, I do think there's now a lot of merit with all the statistical information of going for it. And uh, I, I think a lot of that, there's some good stuff with that. And I, I don't know enough about that. 
but let's take a look at this. I'm almost done here. So same thing. This is a clip with slanting, uh, left end and uh, tackle slanting, right tackle, right end of plane, base, leverage the ball. Good job. One thing I'll, I'll say here, um, obviously uh, the PowerPoint, I'll, I'll certainly share with anybody. Kath, you may be able to share that with guys. Uh, if you don't, you can email me. I'll send you that PowerPoint. I'll send you these cut-ups. And as I, I met with Coach Wolfram maybe a month ago, uh, you're more than welcome to any of our game tape uh, with it. If you want it, uh, any of, I'll send you all of our games. If you have huddle, I'll certainly share what I have. The cut-ups are good because you're seeing the good, um, but you're more than welcome to anything we have here uh, going forward that you think that may help you. Okay, we're well, wing right. Okay, just from the coverage, uh, we're four-man line, corner man, we got a wing, we got a tight end, which our corner and safety have. Uh, Mike linebacker's matched up, tracking the back. Our uh, weak corner's got this tight end man-to-man. -man. Uh, this stunt, uh, we're taking the left end, slanting him into B. This is my old stunt, 4-3. We're taking the tackle and looping him over the top, just a gap exchange. And then we're pinching the uh, right tackle into A and the right end into B. So it's a four-man move. Going back to Coach Glenn, we can talk a little bit. Just uh, quick, undersized guys, get them on the move uh, that we can create some, uh, some penetration and, uh, and uh, take away the point of attack and disrupt the ball carrier. You can see the uh, twist up top. They really don't handle our, our left end coming into B. Disrupts the blocking schemes. Watch our weekend. He jumps inside, although well, he's supposed to be slanting into B. This kid's something. He's a senior uh, uh, guy, uh, one of our Mexican students, and we're trying to get him into. He's been accepted at Husson. And Coach Clark uh, spoke to him and said, Coach, you'll love this, this kid in all the years of playing. He's got as high a motive of any player that I've ever coached. Relentless. So he accepted a Castleton too. And uh, so we're, we're trying to get him up to Husson with Coach Clark and, uh, and their football program. Watch him run to the ball here. Nice twist. I, I like that twist. And you, there's numerous combinations you can do, whether it's a three-man line, which is our base, or if you go to the four-man line. Again, this nice stuff. What they did, they're kind of in their empty tight set here. So what they've done, you know, they've got a wing, but they brought their running back over. So it's really a tight trips. And they run this, like, swing screen type deal. Just uh, a good example, again, we're manned up, uh, corner corner man-to-man -man on the uh, widest, safety man-to-man -man on the second guy in the wing, and then our middle linebacker man-to-man -man on the uh, third guy tight end. Good job here staying disciplined and reacting. Good job swarming the ball. back to their power set and uh, they motion their wing across the form wing across just an example we bump this in cover zero uh, in our cover one man safety free concept against spread and, and kind of open sets 
the guy that either motions or shifts, we own that guy. So we adjust with him. Second con, we talked about banjo and some of that stuff from outside back of the safety. With uh, the cover zero, we bumped this all across. So when I put this slide, and just to give you an example of that. So initially, we got the corner man on the wing, safety man on the tight end, Mike Backer obviously on the back and our weak corner. Now as this motion comes across, we just bump it all across. And you can see now, corner will take whoever shows outside, Mike inside. This is our safety now on the running back. And now this corner ends up man to man on the, on the tight end. Same thing, we've got a pinch. We're taking away the internal gaps. You've already saw this one. This was successful against these guys. They didn't, they didn't handle that well. Said so I was pleased with the, uh, with the line moves and stopping the run. Um, displeased with me uh, teaching the cover zero and getting our eyes. I'm gonna show you a clip here in a little bit getting beaten long and said we had two or three plays off of play action from the tight set you know typical waggle type roots you know post drag backside stuff where we got beaten i'll send that tape to anybody who wants to look at it and uh you know if we're gonna if you're gonna play this the zero concept you know um you know it's really important obviously that your eyes are trained for your guys that are playing man to man not seeing backfield flow and taking the cheese, as we used to say. Same thing, power set. We'll wing right with the back strong. Another example of man to man. The other thing we did, I can't tell. We just, uh, you saw the pinch of the four man line. You saw the uh, slant loop combo by the end tackle. We also just slanted the four man line in different, either to the back, away from the back. This is just an example of just everybody doing a good job playing man to man. Corner's got the wing, we got the wing in the flat. Like to see the safety do a better job over here, manning that guy up instead of getting his eyes back. And then Mike um, taking the back, replacing him. Same thing again. These guys were the best in New England. They got a good team. They 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 really did a nice. They got good players. They're well coached. They got a good philosophy of uh, of offense, defense, and special teams. I said, I'm always learning. Again, this is all new for me. A lot of this is, uh, you know, just the idea, of why don't you punt? You know, there's some good reasoning. Same thing, we got motion, we bumped the motion. Nice job. Again, The uh, we've got the uh, end tackle twist, end coming. Uh, a tackle loop and all, we call it a follow technique. And we're either pinching from the backside and just trying to disrupt. Do a nice job causing some uh, some penetration. And obviously, we're doing this away from the back. So we know when the back's usually located, although they did some same side run, usually with the back on this side and shotgun, typically most offenses are going to run away from the back. So a lot of the twists we designed, this loop was designed away from the back. We're on this side. This end and tackle would do the twist and these guys would pinch. Again, nice job, nice penetration. Caused some disruption back in there. Good tackle. And 
is the last one. One of the things they did, and we knew this, uh, they're pretty much a, uh, back here. I said they, they were a power set, uh, but they did break it and they went to trips and they threw the ball. We, we knew it and, and obviously now when we got anything uh, where they spread outside the, the box from their tight set, we went back to cover three. So now we got a safety in the middle of the field. This is our PG guy, and he, great player, one of our co-captains. He's going to Merchant Marine Academy uh, this coming fall with football support. Doesn't do a great job here. So now, obviously, we go to our nickel defense. So we're going to play him deep and kind of favoring the trips. He's kind of man-to-man, -man, maybe playing backside third. With deep third, okay, and then we're playing, you know, uh, curl flat and hook. This is our outside inside backer. Obviously, we're flexing the nose off to get a, a spy or maybe a short hook type player. Just really got not good technique by uh, uh, free safety. You know, sats have come up, just misjudge this ball. And just give it again. It's tough to win football games when you're giving up easy plays like that. And that was part of it. Uh, this one we should have. We practiced this, and obviously we didn't execute it. So I, that comes back to me uh, as a coach to, to get this done. Um, and then the other issue we had, not more than happy to send this game tape, you'll see with the play action game where they take some type of power run and release their guys on typical wing T type stuff. So that's what I have, guys. Um, uh, as I said, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. I think I've given you some different ways, things that we like and we've done, uh, just different ways of doing it. Uh, that we've seen from, from other guys, and like all of us, we're learning. And uh, so that's what I have. If there's any questions, uh, let's.